rest of your morning headlines here at around 10 past 9. Hope to see you then. Bye bye. This is Breakfast with John Kay and Sally Nugent. Now, despite falling off a stage in the West End earlier this year, Sir Ian McKellen tells Breakfast today he has no plans to retire and doesn't want to see anyone else playing Gandalf in the forthcoming Lord of the Rings movie. The 85-year-old actor broke his wrist and chipped a vertebrae during the performance of Player Kings in June. He's been speaking to our correspondent Tim Moffat about the incident and his plans for the future. Sir Ian McKellen has lived next to the River Thames for more than 40 years. When I retire, you can imagine me sitting here watching the world go by. Are you ever going to retire? The moment will come a time when the phone stops ringing. That's your agent. Am I going to retire? No. Such a part of my life, acting. But in June, Sir Ian, who is 85, was forced to take a break from the profession he loves. He fell off stage during a performance of Player Kings at London's Noel Coward Theatre. Thank you for inviting us in. It's a lovely home. How are you? Uh, yes, I think I'm fine. It was a nasty fall and, the, and the, it was a shock initially, but I fractured my wrist. It's what every kid does when he falls off his bike. And uh, chipped a vertebrae. And do you remember how it happened? I am moving about, got my foot caught in a, the remains of a chair, which I tried to kick off, and in doing that, I propelled myself forward as it were on a skateboard on the newspaper, shiny surface, down to the fourth stage, and then off the stage, which is a three-foot drop, partly broken by a member of the audience on the front row. I was extremely lucky in that I was wearing a, a padded suit, because false stuff the part I was playing is fat. It wasn't that I'd got dizzy or anything like that. It, it was a pure accident. So I count myself lucky that uh, it's beginning to be a distant memory. But it did mean that I, I, I couldn't do the tour. So if it's a chance for me to apologise to the audiences in, in Bristol, Birmingham, Norwich and Newcastle, I'm sorry I wasn't there, but I'll be back. And I'm sure they forgive you and fully understand why. I mean, your, your work ethic has been revered within the industry and beyond for many, many years. Has it made you reassess that at all? Oh, I don't think it's that I've got an ethic. It's, it's what else would I be doing if I wasn't working? I shall take the rest of the year off and then get back to work in, in January. Just keep at it as long as the, the legs and the lungs and the mind keep working. I forget names. And of course, when you say that to somebody, they say, oh, me too. And you think, well, is it the human condition? And does one know, and one's been eight, is no too many names. When you're older, you've got more to remember than people who are young. Nevertheless, it's a nuisance when you can't remember your best friend's name, you know. Or forget your telephone number. <laughs> If you see me or hear I'm doing something, uh, you know it's worth doing. Whether I do it well is uh, a matter for judgment. Talking of to judging um, performances, let's talk about your new film, The Critic. The Critic. In which you play a very caustic, somewhat catty theatre critic in the 1930s. You're being kind to him. <laughs> and, and worse, but I don't want to give anything away. The chief drama critic of the Daily Chronicle. <laughs> Jimmy Erskine's never liked me. Hold your breath for here is theatrical sewage. It's a disaster. You should talk to him. The character you play is gay in the 1930s. Yeah. That was illegal at that time. Queer would be the word in those days. And that was uh, not only unfashionable, but uh, was a secret you had to hold close to your breast. And if other people discovered your secret, you could get into trouble with the law. You must practice your perversion behind closed doors. You're a cheeky old queer, ain't you? May I return the compliment? <laughs> you came out publicly as gay in 1988 whilst you were campaigning against Clause 28, the laws which banned the promotion of homosexuality in schools. I, I've been gay all my life. It's just that I haven't ever come on a chat show and said it. Uh, and um, I've now felt the need to because um, the government, with this new law, has brought my private section into, into the public arena by, by having a law about it. Do you regret not doing that before? 
Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my life would have been very different. Looking back, I wish I'd been able to say to my blood family, long before I did, that uh, I was gay. And it was only when I was mature enough and goaded enough to get angry the new law that was being introduced by the Thatcher government that I took my life into my own hands and said, I am what I am. You know. Is there a particular role of which you're most proud? I was in a wonderful production by Trevor Nunn for the Royal Shakespeare Company in 1976 of Macbeth. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. If you can manage to take on all the intricacies and subtleties of Shakespeare's verse and then make it seem as if you're making it up as you go along, then you've cracked the biggest problem of doing Shakespeare. And that production did it. Out, out, brief, camp. But then, Lord of the Rings. You shall not pass! It's not given to many of us to be in what turn out to be classics. Lord of the Rings is my, um, my Casablanca, you know. Another one, The Hunt for Gollum, is due to be made. Will yeah. you be playing Gandalf in it? Well, I, I, I've had some indication from the powers that be. Gandalf will make an appearance. I'm not letting anybody else put on the pointy hat and the beard if I can help it. No I one else that. would dare. At 85, no one else is doing that. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Ian McKellen there speaking to Tim Moffat. Now, it's just coming up to quarter to nine. People keen to get behind the wheel for driving lessons are being warned to look out for bogus adverts online. Yeah, 